Hello, everyone, and welcome to Creator Spotlight. I'm your host, Randy Mitchell, with Restream, and today I'm joined by Sean Shapiro from the Traffic Service Unit of the Toronto Police Service. You might know him from Ask a Traffic Cop. He goes live every day from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern, Monday to Friday, with a directed Q&A answering your traffic and police questions. He's live, he's live everywhere, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter. You can even find him on YouTube Shorts and TikTok. If you know someone working in public services or who's looking to do more impactful community outreach, tag them in the post below or send them a text. Tell them to join us live because you won't want to miss this Creator Spotlight. And if you do end up missing this Creator Spotlight, keep in mind that we will have a replay available after the show ends today. And of course, if you are joining us live, this is a live Q&A too. So please drop your questions in the chat. John, I'm so happy to have you on today's show. I'm excited to be here. I think it's going to be an awesome show. We have people already joining us live. So like I said, let us know where you're joining from. Leave your question in the chat. We'll definitely circle back to it. Or maybe we even will grab it right away if it's along the same topic. Um, before we get into that, though, I've talked about what you do. I'm going to just quickly jump into who you are, uh, although I'm sure many who are joining us already know. Uh, <laughs> your police constable, Sean Shapiro, has been a member of the Toronto Police Service since 2000. His various capacities within court services, divisional PRU, motor squad, and presently the safety program office at Traffic Services. Fondly dubbed the CEO of No, which we're definitely going to get into, Sean and Traffic Services have become one with all things traffic safety on various social media platforms, most notably TikTok, where they have nearly 600,000 followers. With the support of TPS Traffic, that's Toronto, uh, oh, I just, <laughs> my brain wiped it from my memory, but it's Toronto Police Service Traffic, uh, Sean's carved out a space for uh, policing that's about true engagement education and positive policing and of course as i said we are so honored to have you on the show today sean well like i said it's, it's an honor to be here you guys are so involved in what i do every day so i, I feel like i'm part of the restream family that's actually almost a perfect segue into my first question <laughs> that i have for you so let's start with your story Talk to us about how you went from being on daily patrol with your motorcycle to amassing over nearly 600,000 followers on TikTok. What's that journey been like for you and, and how have you had to change in order to kind of get started on this path? I like to say it happened by accident because uh, there was a collision involved. I was in the motor squad. I ended up uh, being hit by a car, and uh, that changed what my daily routine was. I wasn't able to be in uniform, patrolling the streets. I had a lot of recovery, and when I came back, I was in an administrative capacity, helping out around the office, and uh, I wasn't on camera. There was no even thought of being a media relations officer at the time, but uh, I, I got involved with social media, and I had experience as a personal user, but never really corporately, and as I... Uh, as I, my day-to-day -day, uh, recovery continued to get better and better, I started doing more and more and ended up supporting the media relations officer who uh, was responsible for all the press releases and media spots. And one day, uh, I started uh, being on the other end of the camera. But it's been quite an adventure. And uh, like I said, it happened by accident. Uh, one day, I, uh, I did more and more. And we, we originally behind the camera, never anticipating being in front of it. And then like a light switch, I was the guy on, and now the face of uh, traffic services, for lack of a better word. I feel like it's almost like a perfect storm of circumstance where you mentioned that happened. And then the pandemic, of course, affected the police yeah. force ability to reach out to the public. Um, I mean, during that time, you certainly couldn't do much proactive and positive community building face to face. Right. Uh, well I was going to say that, that before the pandemic, we would go to shows. We would have officers, you know, take shifts at a, at a bike show, motorcycle show, car show, anywhere we could go engage. We had uh, barbecues and community events. We'd bring uh, our motorcycle by and, and let kids climb all over it and talk to the parents about traffic safety. And, you know, we'd see a, a few, uh, maybe 100 people, and maybe we'd answer a bunch of questions. But then when we started doing things online, we were getting thousands of people in a room and, and uh, you know, and TikTok was, was bananas, but we would have six, 700, 1,600 people in the room sometimes, Tens, 10 to 25,000 people uh, over the course of a live session that took an hour. And of course we were, uh, at the time we hadn't 
thought of simulcasting that uh, using Restream, but we had a separate show that was uh, with guests and we had all these interviews and we were doubling up. I, I was streaming for two hours a day. Uh, and then we eventually blended the two together into one Ask a Traffic Cop uh, situation. And, and not only that, we've developed podcasting uh, in the form of something called TPS Traffic Jam. So now we have our interviews done in a pre-recorded thing, all using Restream and uh, it's we're, we're doing a lot of work here. <laughs> So piecing together this puzzle that you, you've kind of get to this whole live video and, and going out to people, did you immediately see the situation as an opportunity to use live video? Or was it something that evolved over time? Did you start with just regular video or text? Or, or how did that all come to be? So very much it, it's been an organic uh, transition. O originally, I was producing very canned uh, videos for special events or uh, PSAs. And, you know, the, the whole idea of live wasn't something I was really on, on I wasn't aware of, or I, I really hadn't thought of it as something for us. Originally, I was just taking those clips, putting them out, and then I'd repurpose them and put them on different uh, platforms. And then one day I saw the opportunity to go live on TikTok. I pressed the button, and here I am talking to, to people and the numbers going up. And then I met Grace, uh, Grace Duffy at, at, at PodFest, and I sat in, in, the, in the Reestry room listening to uh, her tell me all about this great product. and and. I started using it, using the free sample uh, to, to experiment with it, and we were getting, uh, it, was, it, was, it was an out of the box, instant win. It was just working, and now we subscribe to it, and we use it every day, every day, constantly. That's, that's awesome to hear. I'm, I'm glad that Restream was able to be a part of this, uh, especially in getting your message out, because I know, you know, getting this message out to people, informing them what the laws are, what they can do, what they can't do. And I, I've watched your live a couple of times. I know that it's not just this is the law, this isn't the law. It's also breaking down why that law might be that way and, and how it's safer to act a certain way versus any other way. Well, the thing is, it's really about having conversations. We're, we're not interested in just telling you what to do. We want to have conversations conversations and those conversations are led entirely by our audience. Ask a traffic cop is you telling me or asking me a question and me answering it and if no one shows up I got nothing to say. Uh, well you know we talk about what we talk about there, but but if it's it's an adventure every day is a new episode and very often we cover the same topics but it's a different audience. Every every time we open up uh, there's a different person at the other end of uh, the screen uh, who wants to know something. So regardless of, of what the question is or how long it takes to answer it uh, we're having fun and we're engaging our audience. And it really is uh, a, a community building tool. We have people who come onto our show every single day, uh, rain or shine, they're in there saying, good morning, how you doing today? And I recognize the same faces or, or, or uh, icons across multiple platforms. And we're broadcasting on uh, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, and, and uh, also uh, Twitter. Did I say Twitter? Anyway, we're, we're everywhere. We're everywhere our audience is, and it's magic. I get that a lot, especially with TikTok, Twitter, and Twitch all being so similar. I find that I, <laughs> I jumble them all up and I'm, I'm typing in Twitch and I'm like, where are my tweets? What's going on? I, it happens to me all the time. Um, going back to something you mentioned earlier about the police force kind of taking on this live video and all this. Let's be honest. Generally speaking, publicly, public agencies aren't exactly known for being the fastest when it comes to change and innov innovation. In fact, in, a, in previous interviews and even before you said nobody on the force even had any interest in being on camera. So aside from, you know, this obviously being something that is really big, how did you convey that to your organization to get them to embrace live video in the way that you have? I, I've been very fortunate to have a very progressive and uh, uh, supportive uh, team here from the, my sergeant at the time and my sergeant now, is, of course, as well, uh, but all the way up to our, our superintendent who who wanted to be on TikTok and wanted to engage video. And once that became an opportunity, it, it was it was a use case uh, experiment to some degree. You know, it, we had been on other platforms for ages, uh, and I thought that uh, you know seeing our traffic services Twitter account be at about seventeen. 15,000 followers at the time that I started uh, doing all this other stuff. Uh, I thought that was the, the goal. Well, we surpassed that goal on TikTok uh, very, very quickly. And we, we began to grow on our, uh, on our other channels as well. It, it's, it was amazing to see how quickly, and in fact, that my first presentation to, uh, I guess, the next level of command talking about what our success was, we had already blown past the 17,000, and by the time I, I made our, my second presentation, I think we were over 50,000. So there was no argument. Was, the proof was in the pudding. We were doing amazing things, and, and to, to have it grow now to an international audience divided, you know, U.S. and Canada, uh, some even, as we've had I 
Ireland and uh, well, we've had everywhere, everywhere we've had people reach out and say, hey, I'm a police officer from another country or uh, I'm just someone who likes this interesting content that no one else is doing. That's so interesting that other police forces around the world are, are reaching out to, because you're really setting milestones here and, and carving out a path. So I wonder, you know, you mentioned other services reaching out. Have you had anybody within the Toronto Police Service or have any other officers become more interested in live video or are you getting sure. any unsolicited feedback from colleagues? Well, first of all, we've had tremendous support and I get phone calls and emails from members of the service saying, hey, this is awesome. Love what you're doing. And, and not only have we been using this for our internet, um, you know, I dial into radio stations using Restream and guest, uh, guest on their shows. So not only do we uh, do we get out to our internet folks, but we also get out to our traditional media partners. And one uh, officer called to tell me that they were on vacation in the States and heard me, I think it was on XM radio, and it was because of a connection that we had uh, to a radio station that was being rebroadcast. So we're hitting all sorts of people, but it's all been uh, very positive. And I'd ha I've had American police services reach out saying, hey, we wanna do what you're doing, how do we do it? We'll even fly down and, and sit next to you so you can show it to us. Uh, so it's been very, very positive, And uh, it's exciting to see where things could go because we get audience members saying, hey, this is great for Ontario. Do you have one for, for Alberta? And then we send send them over to our friends in Alberta because we have friends uh, in Brooks, Alberta that are doing the very, well, very similar things. They're not, they're only on TikTok from what I understand, but there, there's opportunities to engage the audience and uh, they should do what we do. You know, speaking of engagement, I remember uh, fondly thinking back, especially when I first came across you on TikTok, I remember fondly remembering the time when we used to have the police services come right into our school and talk yeah. directly to the students, or we'd go outside and the fire truck would be there and we'd get to check out the fire truck. In terms of community outreach and meeting people face to face, what are the parallel, uh, the parallels between your job today as, as the voiceover cop uh, and those kind of community outreach programs, or as you said, in the past where you used to bring your motorcycle up for them to take a look at it? Well, in terms of uh, being cost effective, you know, one person speaking to thousands at one time and, and creating an archive of content that can be utilized and broken down into smaller content. And, and I do that. I take my, my full restream, uh, ask a traffic cop, and I'll take it into sound bites and, and make one minute videos for other platforms. So, you know, you, you're creating a treasure trove of, of, of information that'll last forever. But in terms of that, that, that developing relationships, uh, this is far more engaging than, you know, meeting Officer Sean for five minutes and never seeing me again uh, now people are coming back and forth and they've, they've almost become ambassadors of ours uh, because people who are audience uh, members of our audience member, members of our community uh, go off and then they become that knowledge person outside of the service and when people say well how do you know about that they say well I just talked to Sean on, on and and he's that officer from uh, from Toronto Police and uh, I, I, a fantastic example we were at Honda Indy last weekend and I was amazed at how many people, either when we were streaming live from the event, came up and were actually watching on their uh, on their phones when they walked by, or or just came by to say, "Hey, are you that guy?" Uh, and and the conversations, you know, when coupling the live, because it was really our first uh, opportunity to meet people in person since the pandemic. Uh, now we now we've closed the loop. Now we have someone who's developed a relationship, and now they come to me in person, and it's so much more meaningful than simply just meeting me for the first time. And and it, very cool and cool for me. Uh, it's not something that I, at, at all uh, that I was I was ready for. I have, however, found out that if I wear sunglasses and a baseball cap, I'm like Clark Kent, and nobody knows who I am. <laughs> You can almost go incognito. Nobody yeah. will notice the voiceover cop. Well, it, I start talking, and they and they very quickly say, "Hey, you're that guy, aren't you?" Uh, but yeah. It, but yeah, they said, "But I thought you were bald." And I take off my baseball cap, and they're like, "Oh, it is you!" <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. Okay, so I've been dying to ask this question this whole time. Can you walk us through your studio setup? I, I've noticed the the signs behind you on the right, which I'm very jealous of. Uh, and then everything you have on the left seems new. And then also, what are you looking at, if, if you don't mind? Uh, well, I, I can tell you that uh, behind me was really an adaptation. We, we basically took a booth that we used to use for trade shows. Uh, that all breaks down and fits into a couple of plastic bins. And uh, we would take that with us wherever we went uh, and set it up at individual, 
the individual shows, but since we weren't doing shows, I simply set it up against the wall and it hasn't really moved in two years. Now, um, there's two TVs hanging and they don't do very much, although I'm, I'm, I'm working on that. I got plans, I got plans. Uh, the signs were signs that we had for trade shows. They are corrugated plastic fake street signs, although we've often been asked what the offense for stealing those is uh, based on the example we've set, but it, it, they, are, they are just props. And we're, we're looking now to, it, to actually move to a, a bigger space, a soundproof stay, uh, space, because we've just developed this into a full-time thing. It, it's, it's, we're, we're not, it's not going away, it's gonna get bigger. And uh, we are uh, developing. So, okay, so that's the background. In, in front of me, uh, I have uh, a number of mics uh, that, that are running into a Zoom P8, a PodTrack P8, which allows me to uh, to obviously put audio into Restream and get audio out, sharing that with uh, with my guests. Uh, I, I have the ability to do things. Uh, I don't know if I want to to give you a sound effect here. I'll give you a little sample. I've got my soundboard, so I can add some sound effects. I have some theme music. Um, the microphones, I'm running all XLR mics, but I have Shure MB7s that allow me to, to, uh, to go out onto other platforms so I can feed my audio into an iPhone, which I do actually right off the, the pod track. I've got a TRRS cable uh, going into an, a lightning adapter, so my TikTok gets that. Uh, I'm using one. Of, I'm using a, a Ceremonic smart rig that allows me to take content off the board and go into an additional phone for Instagram Live. So I've got, I've got three phones, sorry, two phones and a camera in front of me. Uh, uh, the camera is directly to the computer in Restream, and then I have individual phones for both, uh, uh, for uh, what's it called, Instagram and for TikTok. And beyond that, lots of computers and, and USB hubs. <laughs> <laughs> that is a amazing setup. It sounds like you're looking at a kind of a smorgasbord of tech that might be in front of you. I wonder, how do you get all those comments and feedback from all these different platforms to be able to answer them so coherently when you're on live, it looks like almost seamless. Well, it, it was working really well uh, for a long time with the bulk of our audience being in uh, in TikTok and TikTok had a Q&A feature that was working great and it's not working for us right now. So we've, we've, we've moved a lot of people over onto uh, to other platforms, onto YouTube, and then they become part of that aggregate uh, screen, which I'm looking at right now actually in Restream. And we have audience uh, from, uh, with people from multiple different platforms coming into one feed, which makes life really easy. Uh, I also have help. I'm not alone when I do a show. I am the face, I am the technical person, but I have members of the community that have identified themselves as people who wanna support us who are out there saying, you know, we're, we're here every day, can we help you? And they, they actually engage and text me uh, on screen the, all the questions and make it very easy to, uh, for me to, to communicate. Because if I had to go through streams of hundreds and hundreds of comments, I can't, I can't even stop it fast enough to, uh, to pick one out. So I, to some degree, it's curated. Um, when it was smaller, it was just me. But again, we have members of the community and, and members of the service who, who help. Uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to think of what, what else we got going on here. I, I've recently started using uh, a, a, a platform that I've put people onto uh, so they can ask questions in advance to try and help it out. That's uh, by going to trafficcop.ca, people can go into our volley space and we have uh, a Q&A function that I then take those questions and answer them live or I'll play them right over the microphone. We're, we're trying to engage people on every different technology platform to find out what the best way is. And, and ultimately it's live and that's what's the best. Yeah, absolutely. And especially because you're innovating. I feel like those people who joined you at the very beginning uh, and who are with you now just see you're constantly innovating. You're constantly trying to do better. You're constantly, uh, I mean, the information has always been gold, but now you're presenting it in a way where people can grab the bite size or you, you mentioned your podcast. Um, I, I did want to actually touch on that. How is the podcast going? Have you found that different from doing live video or what so, are the parallels there? It, it, most most of our guests are, are, are a little nervous about going live. Either that or they're really gung-ho about live. One of the two extremes. And we start um, we started doing everything live and uh, we found that for many of our guests, again, who are nervous about live, wanted the opportunity to edit, <clears throat> excuse me, or wanted the ability for with a video version to have overlays and 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 an intro and so we've we've decided to go offline and record in restream our video we then go and strip the audio out and export it into uh in, in, and use the audio only and, and put it up over uh, as a podcast and our podcast is available anywhere that podcast can be downloaded and oddly enough because we're a traffic uh, program it really is a perfect pairing because so many people want to uh, to take in our information but can't legally, and I say that because they want to do it when they're driving, when they have time. So the podcast ability to take the audio and and have it as multi-track, so I can adjust level one to level two. Because uh, in in a restream, each person can be as individually downloaded, which is gold, by the way. Uh, 
it, it allows us to give people the opportunity to take on our, our information without breaking the law using their phone with the screen on. We don't want that. So this is, it's just been perfect. And it's growing. It's, the, the, the podcast is a slow to uh, uh, adopt thing. We're, we're coming. We're, we're, we're growing. I noticed we have uh, a, a question in the chat that came from one of your paired channels. Um, I'd love to give our audience a taste of what it would be like <laughs> if they joined your stream. Would you mind answering this, uh, this question if I put it up on screen? Well, what do we have? What do we have? It is, uh, Sean, if there is a police car with their lights on and a tow truck with lights on and loading his bed, do you legally have to move to the left lane and slow down to go around them? So here's the deal. There's something called slow down, move over. Uh, it's, it's a law there to keep emergency services, and in this particular contest, a context that includes tow truck operators, if they are actively working on a uh, at the side of the road, they've got their lights on, you are obligated to slow down and pull over and give them the appropriate amount of space. We want people to give them as much spa space as possible. That's where they're working and they have to stay safe. Uh, we've seen too many people injured uh, by being uh, driven closely by or, uh, or, or or people just, it's amazing how, how flashing lights tend to attract people. So we want people to give them as much space as possible. It is an offense under the Highway Traffic Act. And uh, uh, I, I, I see it's Angela who's asking the question and she is in fact a regular. <laughs> She says, I'm a regular, Sean. Uh, so, that, so that's it. It is a law. And, uh, you know, the, the folks that are out there working on the road, including police officers, need that safe space. That's awesome. I'm, uh, thanks for joining us, Angela. I appreciate you giving uh, the entire audience here a taste of what it would be like to join a ha uh, hashtag traffic cop or hashtag voiceover cop uh, live stream. They're definitely, one, they're entertaining, I find, and two, they're very educational. Going back a little bit to your setup, though, I did want to just ask, what was it, what equipment were you using at the beginning? Because you mentioned you have, you know, all this equipment in front of you now. You're going live to all these channels. But take us back to the first time you hit live. What, what, what did that look like? Oh, it was far less, uh, you know, amazing. Uh, I did have a bunch of equipment from home. I did bring in, uh, well, I had a, a uh, what's it called, a... Uh, a webcam. So it was a webcam. I, I think I used a headset the first time, uh, just a USB headset, and I just did it. There was no trying to be fancy and special. I, I did eventually upgrade and, and bring in uh, a, a dynamic microphone with a booster, you know, to go to, as a DAC to get into the computer. And I, I eventually uh, brought in a DSLR, uh, which, because there's some great, you can use a Canon DSLR uh, that was not originally intended to do what I was using, but it, free software and boom, you, were, you I had great video. And it's been a development. It keeps getting better and better. Uh, and, and now we're looking at, uh, at getting three cameras that are the same so we have the same color and, and uh, everything looks uh, even and, 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 and without, without that. Because I, I bring in guests that, that were on webcam after I went to the fancy setup and like, they look terrible. So now I want to have everybody on the same, uh, the same platform and the same equipment so we sound this. Well, you can't sound the same, but sounds similar <laughs> and, and also look the same. I... I really appreciate that. I also really appreciate the fact that um, you notice the difference between a, a webcam and a DSLR because we've had that same issue in the past where we've had somebody join from their phone camera and we're like, oh, maybe you could um, use a different computer. And they, they switched their computer and it was, it was much better quality. Um, so I wanted to touch back on your live stream schedule. Sure. Uh, you, you go live every single day from, from 10 a.m. to uh, 11 a.m. Eastern time. How do you maintain this cadence and, and stay motivated uh, every day? I, I, well, staying motivated every day. Uh, I, uh, I, I love this. This is really cool. This is giving me, so a, as someone who is not able to go on the road as a police officer and perform the functions of a police officer the way I used to, this is giving me a whole new level of engagement and personal satisfaction that, um, that I thought I lost. I was, I was pretty upset about it. I, I, I missed and still missed the road. Uh, don't get me wrong, but this has given me the opportunity to be a cop again. And, and, uh, and that's not to, to, to throw shade on anybody who's not working in the capacity they want to be, but this is really giving me satisfaction um, and I I love it I, I wake up looking forward to it I go to I, I'm, I'm answering comments and questions at home on my own time because I enjoy the interaction and I enjoy helping people which I, I get to do again so this is very much part of my lifestyle my kids are a little bit on me saying daddy um, you're on the phone too much <laughs> you know they're really um, they're they, they really like me to turn it off and I try my best when at home to do it but I you know, take my little moments to, to jump back in um, but 
but we're always talking about ideas and uh, this has allowed me to be very creative and I enjoy it a lot. So that's that's how I stay motivated and interested because I, I love it. But in terms of uh, how do I maintain uh, the, the ability to do the show, it's entirely because of the support of the police service. Uh, from the chief down, uh, they've been very supportive. The chief has been a guest on my show. Uh, we'll, we'll continue to be a guest on my show again. I think he's, he's got one scheduled uh, in, the, in the very near future. He's going to come back on. So it's really exciting to, uh, to have something that other people acknowledge as valuable. Uh, we even did some surveys to ask for customer feedback, you know, for viewer feedback. And, and the, the survey results were amazing. The, what people wrote saying the value that they got out of having access, um, you, you just, I couldn't have made up stories to support myself as well as the audience did. That's so awesome, and and honestly, from from a viewer who's watched your live shows in the past, you can you can feel that motivation when you join the stream, uh, and I've even joined your stream a couple times with your chief on there, and I I think that's so awesome to be able to have a communicate have a conversation not only every single day with a police officer with, uh, like yourself, but to have that other person joining you from within the organization, whether it be a chief or one of your colleagues. It's it's just so cool to see the Toronto Police Services embracing live video in this way. Um, for sure. So thank you for that. <laughs> I, I, I just saw a comment pop up from uh, Mika who says, can I use my phone? And uh, I'm assuming that's about a restream question. And it really uh, it, it brings me to something we used to do and, we, and we'll do again, is I would reach out to officers on the road and invite them using a restream link to come join me on the show. What's going on at the corner of you know Young and Steels? Because there's a, and I, I would get like a, like a, a location specific update Date. Uh, it was so cool to do a little live interview snippet, just come online for 10 minutes and talk about something completely unplanned, just go live. And we were doing that and, and we will do that again because I love the way that, that feels. And they're just using their cell phone. So what a great comment to trigger that. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. I love it. It's like a, a modern version of, um, I've seen this show, I can't remember the exact, I think it might just be called Cops, where there's this guy in like a room surrounded by monitors and he's like, we're going to live to Jimmy in the field, there's a, this going on. So I think that's I, really awesome. I, I've heard of that show, I've even seen it, but I can't think of what the actual name is. Uh, maybe it's called Live, live PD or something like that. Um, I think I, that's it. That might be it. And that, that's sort of the thing. I'm, I'm like in mission control here, and I have the ability to reach out to any officer anywhere. Uh, all I need is an email address. So uh, if they're willing, and I, I mentioned it, you mentioned it again. Um, uh, last we spoke, you, I mentioned it. You mentioned it at the beginning of the show. Not everybody wants to do what we're doing. Um, I, 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 I'd love to get more people involved with being on camera. We have had a whole bunch that, that have come in uh, graciously being willing to be uh, on screen. And I, I listen, I make mistakes. I'm not perfect. Uh, and, and that's something that you have to sort of be comfortable with to be on camera, especially when live. But uh, it is what it is. I've, <laughs> I've had some interesting oopsie doos. But it, at the same time, uh, it's life. We're real people. And there's the, the hopefully with with as we continue, we get more people involved and more guests on the show and more officers and maybe somebody's going to take over for me one day. I, I think that'd be great because I'd love this to just expand and grow. It's it's funny that you mentioned that. I feel like we have um, the same backstory, but uh, but in in different versions where. Um, you know, at Restream, I'm mainly the video producer. I make videos, I'm behind the scenes, it's edited content. So there's not this uh, immediate feeling that I can say something wrong here and then that's it, it's out there forever because I can edit it afterwards. Yeah. And at the beginning of the year, Grace actually is the one who convinced me to start doing live videos. So I, I know exactly what you're saying when you're like, you know, maybe I, maybe some people don't want to go live. I had that feeling, it's it's difficult to get over, but it's awesome that you're willing to, to help people get over that, especially people who are traditionally not live video people or video at all. And, and then there's also people who have, have aspirations of being involved in other areas of policing that might require, you know, some undercoverness. So it's, it's a big deal to, for some people, depending on their career goals, to be on camera or not. And, and you got to remember, 20 years ago, when, when I started with the police, 22 years ago with the police service, you couldn't even have, well, you couldn't even have a Facebook account. You weren't permitted to do it. Uh, you couldn't, you know, openly have these things. And they, they wanted to make sure that you had no, uh, uh, platform uh, access or if you did you know people were people were not getting hired uh, by the police for having uh, certain content up there obviously inappropriate content but nevertheless there's this belief that we shouldn't be on the internet and it's taking some effort to undo that because now we are embracing it we have officers that are trained and qualified and understand their risks and are are coached in what to do and not to do and you know 
maybe not engage certain trolls. And, and I, I gotta say, I do things a little different. I do engage a lot of trolls because there's some people who, who say things in our lives that really need to have uh, a response. Even, not not, to, not to, uh, to, to raise it and take it to the next level, but just to shut it down and say, you know, that's not appropriate, as opposed to ignoring it, looking the other way. Um, but yeah, lo lots of cool things happening and uh, I've lost entirely what I was going with this. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. I I have one quick question for you before I uh, I want to take some co questions from the chat. Be they sure. about this live stream or maybe possibly about traffic, if that's okay with you. Um, so, audience, if you're ready, get your questions in the chat. We're going to take them right after this. Okay, so you have a strong presence on YouTube, TikTok, uh, and you mentioned that Restream is helping you to go live to even more channels at once. Um, such as LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and, and probably even more places as you keep going. How does each platform uniquely serve what you and, and the police services are trying to do? And do you have a strategy for each of them? Well, it's, it, it is the same content being broadcast on all of them at the same time, uh, but obviously it's a different audience. So making ourselves available to people who aren't going onto YouTube because they just didn't think of it or they don't, that's not their primary uh, source. Being available on a live elsewhere, makes us, it's that, it's that free advertising. Why shouldn't we be there? If we're not there, we can't talk to anybody. And we get gamers who pop in and like, oh, ask a question about you know, random stuff that we never would have thought of. So we want to appeal and, and, and make ourselves accessible to everybody. And by making our streams available everywhere, we're more, more, more fishing lines in the water type thing. Okay. I see a couple of chats rolling in here, and, and, and we've got our background producer, which is the elusive grace that we've mentioned a couple of times, <laughs> uh, prompting the chat. I see a question here from Angela, who's asking, uh, are radars illegal to have in your car? What if I have a GPS radar on my phone as an app? I assume they're probably talking about Waze or something like that. Yeah, so, so we've had a question similar to this before, and it's an awesome one. Thank you, Angela, for asking it. Um, radar in Ontario, and every province in, in Canada and every state in the United States is gonna have slightly different rules and laws and so on. In Ontario, it's illegal to possess, use, transport, like you cannot have a radar device, uh, radar detector, or something that interferes with our ability to measure your speed, so laser jammers and things like that. Uh, under the, the Highway Traffic Act of Ontario, it comes with 100 Seventy dollar fine and two demerit points uh, on conviction. But what people don't know about this particular rule is that we also have search and seizure authority. So if we believe you have one in your vehicle, we can stop you. We can search your vehicle and the persons inside that vehicle to find the device uh, or, or devices. The only way you can transport legally is if it's manufactured here and is being transported, exported uh, in, in sealed containers, you know, outside of the province. Because even selling them is illegal. Okay, so we talk about GPS now uh, as an option because we covered the, the the first half of it. Using Waze isn't a speed measurement detector or avoidance machine. It's it's something sharing information that's that's social, and it's not illegal. I'm, I, I'm I think it's great if it makes everybody slow down. I think it's bad if it temporarily uh, makes people slow down and then return to their bad driving, which is speeding, which is dangerous and illegal. Um, so we can't charge you for using your or being notified by a social app. Um, but at the end of the day, we just want you to drive safely. And I guess there's nothing really stopping the officer who's who's running this uh, traffic stop or or speed. Um, I see trap. I guess is the term for it. Um, I don't know if it's really a trap, speed, though, but speed enforcement. We're just catching people doing what they're doing. We're not trapping them or entrapping yeah. them because we're not inducing them to do the thing that they're doing. I, I will say this: um, it's when you use the app, it's just telling you what somebody else has reported, right or wrong. And we don't know if they're doing something that's speed enforcement or working or, or uh, you know, at a crash scene and uh, with a tow truck driver. And it's just good to know that they're up ahead because that allows you to slow down in advance. So there's actually positives from the, uh, the Waze reporting. I think that's great. Um, if it's something just to get out of yeah, a speeding ticket, I, I think people just need to slow down. But that's two different sides of it. And if I'm just going to quickly uh, mention, if you're just tuning in, this is Creator Spotlight with Restream, where we showcase our customers doing amazing things with live video. I'm joined today by Sean Shapiro from the Traffic Service Unit of the Toronto Police Services, but you might know him as Ask a Traffic Cop. We're chatting about how he's amassed a massive social media following, 1.13 thousand subscribers on YouTube, and nearly 600,000 followers on TikTok in just under one year of live streaming. Uh, so if you have any questions about live streaming, about how he did that, or about uh, traffic in general, feel free to leave the comments below. Uh, and then going right on to my next question, another question that I've very much been wanting to ask you uh, this entire time. 
Ooh. How do you ha- Sorry, <laughs> my script scrolled all the way over to the top, and I'm like, wait, I want to make sure I got this. I wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you handle criticism or backlash you might get from being online or being a public official online? I know you mentioned uh, sometimes you'll call out trolls because you just want to shut certain things down, but sometimes there's you say something and and it's taken in the wrong context or even worse taken out of context and shared elsewhere has that happened to you and and how maybe have you dealt with that oh i've had people stitch my content on TikTok uh, and and try and spin things or or uh, you know take one line and not the whole message it happens and uh, you know what any advertising is good advertising as far as i'm concerned whether you love me or hate me you're talking about me and eventually that'll bring people back to our channel to get the whole message and uh, I, you know i always try and and leave humor and, uh, and 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 keeping it real in the messaging. I'm not trying to use complicated speak. I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, high and mighty about the law. I, I do talk about the law. I don't talk. Like people ask me, how, what's how how much can you legally speed over the limit? Uh, yeah. And and of course the answer is nothing. It, it, it's a limit, not a minimum. Uh, so. <laughs> Not everybody likes the answers, and I've been featured on things like Six Buzz, which is another uh, channel on uh, on multiple platforms that will take other people's content and reshare it. And things have gone bananas viral, uh, but it's all good as far as I'm concerned. You can't you can't take what we're share, sharing here and make it bad, even if you don't agree with it. Uh, to the people who don't like what I have to say, some of them make a personal attack. Somebody, uh, yes, what did they say? They said, uh, "I think your advice is uh, as a TikTok traffic cop is." as good as a Tic Tac or something like that. It was hilarious. I mean, he was angry, but I was laughing because I can find humor in this stuff. And if you can't, uh, if you're if you're going to allow yourself to be really vulnerable, I mean, there's some, some people have said some really nasty things and, and it, you know, that, that does bug me. But at the end of the day, I got thick skin. Uh, if, if, whether someone is, is calling me, uh, you know, uh, uh, pig or, or, or something like that. Like, like I get that. We see, we see all these ACAB messages and it's unfortunate. It's, it's, it's sad that that's what people want to use. And there's very hurtful people or it's, it's like grade two. It's, it's, it's people being very childish in that moment, whatever they got going on in their life, I'm blessed to be doing what I'm doing and they can't get me down. So if you're going to be putting yourself out there, know that there's going to be some, some people who, who will choose and take opportunity to try and get you down, but you, you can't let them. That's it. And I think for anybody joining your live stream, it's it's immediately obvious within three seconds how this is something that's important and, and should be shared. Because if you just look at the amount of viewers that are watching and the amount of chat engagement, when was the last time uh, that the, a police officer had access to that many people? And not only just once a day or once a week or a month, but or in your case, once a day and every single mm-hmm. time you go live, you have access to this and you're able to share all this information instantly. It, it very is. It very much is an access thing. It's amazing how many people um, don't have the ability to to reach out and speak to an officer. Like to pick up a phone and call someone is is a very different experience. Like you can call any police station anywhere in the world. I'm sure they'll answer your questions. Uh, but here's some an opportunity to speak to someone who knows what they're talking about in the traffic space, which is something that affects everybody. Like you, whether you walk, ride, or drive, you're talking about the road. You're engaged in the road. Whether you're a vulnerable road user or a motorcycle, like everybody has some access. And even if you yourself never leave your house people you know and love and rely on do so this is something that's very uh international and and transcends all things whether you 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 like police don't like police it's just a reality that traffic touches you so this is something that has had uh i see part of the question uh yeah the the um the deal is that um we have uh made policing very accessible and, and anonymous and easy to get to. And, and there's no stress because if you don't get us on Monday, you'll get us on Tuesday. I, we had some people that, that emailed because I went on vacation for two weeks. And uh, people were like, well, what do we, how do we get our, <laughs> how do we get answers to our questions? But I, I took, I took one of my phones with me and I was broadcasting uh, a few times while I was in Florida. I went to Disney, shared some content. And, uh, you know, it, 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 I, it, this is more than just, you know, work. It's, it's, it's sharing uh, and, uh, and it's cool. I saw some of your uh, paired channels, uh, guests that are joining us today, um, mentioned the common criticism, which I've also seen, and I love your response, and I'd love to give you the chance to give it in here. But what is your response when you get a question like this? Like, shouldn't be doing real work, or this is what my tax dollars are paying for. Um, What's your go-to statement on that? 
I absolutely love it when people try and suggest that what we're doing here is somehow wrong, that I would be better yeah. served writing a ticket to one person than educating thousands. Uh, and, and it's really nothing that I haven't already said in, in, in this uh, interview. It's that I am, one, I, I love telling them how I ended up behind the camera. And, and when I talk about the fact that I've been in a collision and I can't actually go on the road, even if I wanted to, that usually shuts them down. One person actually put up, uh, they looked up online, we have something called the Sunshine List, which, pub which publishes anyone who makes over $100,000 that works for a government agency. So they went up and said, we pay this guy over $100,000 to make TikToks. And while I might be one of the higher paid TikTokers, uh, this isn't the only thing I do, but it is incredibly important because traffic safety is more than just tickets and, uh, and, and and collision investigations. It's about education. It's about preventing people from getting into those situations. And knowledge is power. We're giving that power away. We're giving everyone that opportunity to get the information they need to not only be cool at parties and having answers to questions that they didn't before be able to answer, but it, it, this is real work and it's specialized work. And as a Canadian myself, I have to say, this is the best investment that I can think of. Because not only are you live every single day from 11 or from 10 a.m. to 11 answering questions, but it seems like every waking second you're thinking about how to make this live stream better and how to reach more people sure. and how to educate more people. And that's amazing. Yeah, and, and like I said, my kids are not happy because I'm always, I'm, I continue it off duty. And uh, sometimes, you know, 4.30 in the morning, I wake up and I'm, I'm wiping the sleep from my eyes. I'm like, how many questions? Oh my God, I got a lot of questions. Because they pile up and I want to try and get to everybody. And I know it's not possible, but I feel bad. Somebody asks a question, I want to be able to answer it because this is really me. And maybe one day we'll have a team of folks who can log in and ask questions so it's not just me. But, uh, and, and I got to say, I have some amazing colleagues who have jumped on on, on their own accounts and answer questions uh, in, the, in the chat and in the comments on all the channels um, and that's really cool it's cool that they believe in what I'm doing and what we're doing as a service so much that they are contributing themselves off duty uh, but it's uh, it, all in all uh, I, I couldn't be happier with the way this has progressed and uh, and, and I'm excited about what's going to happen tomorrow because we never know it's going to keep getting big, bigger and better Yes, exactly. And all of us at Restream will be tuned in following along as we have up until this point as well. Um, speaking of which, at Restream, we talk about using live video to build relationships in the community and, and building trust and likability, which is exactly what you're doing uh, times 100, I imagine, uh, local law enforcement. So you're providing this educational content related to traffic safety. What impact have you or your fellow officers seen um, in the community as far as engagement outside of social media? Have there been a decrease in stop sign violations, fewer drivers being pulled over, maybe new love for seatbelts? Yeah, really. It's, it's really hard to measure how we prevent something because obviously you measure what you what you have, uh, what has happened, not what hasn't happened. But that's why we did that survey. We we did a, a survey monkey survey and asked people for their impact after they've um, uh, you know watched the show. Uh, we put it on all social media platforms. Maybe it even worked to advertise the show. Uh, gave them a QR code. They went on and people. Some people wrote books like like I'm a safer driver because of this. I didn't know. Uh, it, it, but it's so hard to to really figure out your engagement and, and what kind of impact that is really making. Part of this is just going off and hoping uh, that will change some lives. But if you save one life, if you change, if you save one ticket, if you change the behavior of, uh, of, of a group of drivers, one life saved is, is, is the world, right? Exactly. And it's it's just so important because even even aside from saving lives, just generally education, I, I've seen so many people who, who are just learning to drive. They're just getting their G. And of course, we had the pandemic, which shut down everything and slowed down the G test to a very, very slow crawl. And, and mm -hmm. then like, what do I do? You know, I'm supposed to get this in six months, but I'm, I can't even schedule an appointment for two years. But that was such a big thing for us. You know, when we were announcing information and we are a great source of information, we're speak, we're, we're part of the government. We're, you know, we, we get that information from the, the, the horse's mouth for lack of a better term. And we share that information and we're sharing it through the first place you're looking in the morning or at late at night. So we, we, we're skipping all this waiting for the six o'clock news and how many people watch the news anymore? You know, especially the younger folks, they're not getting their information uh, somewhere else. They're getting the information from uh, the sources we're uh, publishing and broadcasting to. So it, that was huge. So many people said that, oh, I got my driver's license I, uh, test booked because of the tip you gave me. Or not, not that I'm telling them the answers to anything. I'm just telling them how to get the bloody thing booked because we're we're, we're listening to the comments. We're, we're sharing information. Someone says, oh, I did this. It worked for me. I'm like, oh, so one of our viewers said that. You try it. And and the overwhelming response was this was helpful. So it's that's really cool. Um, 
it, it's we talk about so many things, like even impaired driving. You talk about how I learned about impaired driving as a high school student. I had people coming in and doing presentations. I saw ads on TV. Well, with cord cutters, what what's TV? Like, if it's not on Netflix, some people haven't seen it. So we are we are bridging that gap and bringing information to the end user, direct, no filter, and it, it's important stuff. But it's it it really is the power of the internet and. Uh, uh, being on all these platforms has given us uh, access and given others access to us that, that just cannot be compared to anything else. We still do the traditional media. They're still really important. And we, we love our partners. I go on the radio on a regular basis and, and people call in. But we're talking to different age groups every time that happens. And I think that's so important for the younger uh, for the younger crowd, especially the people who are on TikTok. Because if you think, you know, normally they would be in class uh, during, throughout this pandemic, and and these police officers, such as yourself, would go into the classroom and teach them stuff. But as with lots of things that got forgotten or left behind in the pandemic, these like in school scientists, in school officers, in school firefighters, it wasn't possible to do that online. And yet you Sam, you somehow managed to quickly get around that and still get directly to them, probably in a, in a format that they're more interested in engaging with. Well, it, yeah, it's not as intimidating, I, I think. Uh, a, lo a lot of kids that I meet, and I remember going to all these events in, in uniform with the motorcycle, and I'm six foot five, I'm towering over these little uh, you know, kids, and some of them are like, you're cool, and some of them are like, oh my God. So it depends on the environment, and uh, I think this just is really easy. One of the no number one comments I get is that I look a lot shorter on screen. You know, the, the people are, are shocked that I'm this, this big guy um, towering over them, and it throws them off. But again, I could be intimidating to a lot of people in person, and I'm not on screen. At least I hope I'm not, because this is not a, 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 a trying to be a tough guy or, or, or trying to be famous. This is just me trying to help you. So that's, that's the whole focus of what we do here. And I think uh, the camera angle, whether it was intentional or not, might be really helpful because your camera angle is, it seems to be either right in front of you or maybe up a little bit. So I think it's probably an angle that people aren't, aren't used to seeing uh, if you're 6'5". Yeah, yeah, <laughs> eye to eye. I, I've, I've played with different angles. This is what happened since the last time I broke it down. I, and and I, I, Honda Indy just beat me up. And so I had this up in the air and it was pointing down, trying to even make me look smaller. And now I'm trying this whole eye to eye thing. You know what? It will, we'll change it up and see what works. But the, the whole goal is to be, uh, pr it, to be approachable. And uh, I hope that I am in person. Uh, and for the people who know me, because I'll tell you, what, we had one guy, he, he got on a, on a GO train and came to the Honda Indy on Fan Friday, which was free access, just to meet me because he saw me in a live uh, saying that I was there and he, he hopped on a train and came down just to say hello. And he, you know, it's it's it. That was really heartwarming. Not only was it for him, but so many people came up and said, "I'm a big fan. Can I take a photo with you?" I, I, I'm I'm not a, a, a this concept of being a celebrity. Not something that I still acknowledge that people recognize me. It's weird. It's weird for me, but it's awesome because it means that uh, they 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 somehow I've stuck in their head, and maybe that means that some of the information is there too. <laughs> Well, I couldn't imagine another cop that I would rather see as a celebrity or just another person. You, you're, you're just so fun to talk to and listen to. And, and I, I really enjoy you taking the time to, to connect with us and our audience. And I'd love to clo the, close out the show by having you highlight some of the interesting folks in Toronto you've gotten to know through uh, live streaming, whether you've had them on your podcast or maybe oh, you've had for them sure. in the for, studio. First thing that I want to talk about is the fact that Everything we've done has not, it's, it's no dancing required. Everything that we've done so far, I have not danced. Uh, I, I, I did sort of sing once, but that's it. Uh, and, but I'm, I'm not jumping into fads and, and trying to, to, to push things on anything other than education. But let's talk about who I've been uh, meeting and, and collaborating with because of uh, the live streaming. So first of all, Jerry Agar on News Talk 1010, uh, they reached out early on uh, and, and said, hey, we'd love to do something. We wanna feature uh, the TikTok traffic cup on air. So we blend, they, they log in through Restream, uh, we go on air, uh, we're on their channel, they're on our channel, and on those days I actually do an hour and a half because I don't want their audience to cut into my audience. Uh, so we, we're there for an hour and a half, so, a long podcast or a long uh, a long live stream an hour and a half for me and uh 
yeah, the, the deal is that uh, that's one. I, I've got the folks at uh, Dave's Corner Garage. They're on Zoomer Radio. Uh, they are, uh, Zoomer Radio, if you've never heard of it, is, is, is aiming at, a, at an older demographic. Uh, they have a car show, and we'll talk about, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just speaking to different audiences. And uh, we'll, either by telephone, I'm going to be in person actually on Saturday in their studio uh, doing exactly what I do here. Uh, I've, I've spoken to people at, at all areas. In fact, here's a really funny thing. When I do stand up in, in presentations or, or media clips for our local news, they they watch the show. They they watch what we do. So everyone's paying attention, and and to know that they are, uh, like I'll mention, I just did a TikTok. Yeah, we saw that TikTok. That that means that we're we're on it. That's awesome, and it's it's so awesome to see that you're you're going out and you're and you're meeting all these people and you're going to the events like the Honda Indy. Do you, do you find that you're you're traveling more outside of Toronto now as the voiceover cop than you did uh, in your previous life? So I, I've never, I, as of right now, I've never traveled as uh, you know on uh, to do presentations. I, I do uh, presentations to the Canadian Armed Forces. Uh, I've, I've spoken to their new drivers a couple of times, independently of the fact that uh, I'm I'm doing this. I think it just it worked out that a lot of them know me now because of this. Um, mind you, I was I was shocked. I just did one a couple of weeks ago, and they're like, "We're not really on TikTok, but, but uh, they are now, or they will be on uh, watching us on Restream." And now I will be traveling into to Saskatchewan later this year, speaking to schools, universities high schools, uh, different different people with our friends from TURF, the Traffic Injury Research Foundation, who are instrumental at, at doing research and sharing the findings with uh, government agencies, at, all in the interest of making roads safer for everybody. So uh, because of my involvement here, I'm now going and assisting them, and we're going to speak to people elsewhere, uh, outside of the province of Ontario. So who knows what's going to happen, but uh, we, we just keep growing and, uh, and doing more good things. It's very exciting for me and, and personally satisfying. Well, Sean, it's been such an honor to talk with you today. I've seen that we get tons of people in the chat asking questions, some about Restream. If you did ask a question about Restream, we're going to stop by after the show. We'll respond to your comment there. Um, and also, we've had a couple other questions, I think, directly towards you, but I think we've covered more or less, uh, specifically this one, which I think is um, obvious for me, but maybe not for all of our audiences. Uh, we covered it a little while ago. I yeah. absolutely love what I'm doing. And uh, uh, I, I, I was asked if I would go back to doing what I was doing before and give this up if, they, if I could go back on the road. And I think that a part of me would always do this, uh, given the opportunity to do this and go back on the road if there was a way to split it up. I would totally do that because this is important work. Even if I could go out and write 100 tickets a day, um, I'd want to come back in and do this because this is helping more people uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a different way, in a unique way. We're changing, I think, changing lives here because uh, Again, you change a couple of uh, behaviors, little little adjustments, and it could, it could really change the course of someone's life, and that's very rewarding. Even though I haven't got the confirmation that I've changed people's lives, uh, I have to believe that somewhere, somewhere, uh, somebody has has had a positive impact. Uh, maybe, maybe I've inspired someone to become a police officer because we talk about recruiting all the time. We 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 go with whatever we get. So if someone says I want to be a cop, how do I do it? I've got someone who just emailed me uh, offline to say, Hey, I, I really want to be a member of the police service. What can you do? I said, You know, me message me. We'll talk. So. This is more than just that, and uh, more than just talking about traffic. Uh, I, I think it's awesome. And yeah, I truly, truly love what I do. But I loved what I did as a police officer. I loved what I did as a court officer. I loved being an auxiliary officer, uh, volunteering my time prior to becoming a paid member of the service. I've been blessed to have been involved in this great organization, uh, just doing things to help people. Well, I am... 100% certain you've changed people's lives and definitely probably saved people's lives as well. Uh, speaking of that, I'd love if you could give uh, some time to tell our audience uh, where they can find out more about you and, of course, your next masterclass. Oh, so so really cool stuff. Um, my next masterclass. Uh, what I'm doing now uh, is, is very interesting to me anyway. Uh, is that I want to create a community uh, where people can access all the time, not just when we go live, but ask a question, asynchronously get answers. So that's something that we're using Volley for. Um, Volley app is, is something that I found actually because of a live stream, oddly enough, uh, talking to uh, to a representative from the company with with, with Grace and friends. Uh, and I, I went onto the app, I started doing the deep dive and fell in love with it. So trafficcop.ca is, is just a domain that I, I got just so we could have an easy way of bringing people to our space. And that's to to access traffic questions 24-7. Uh, now, the the folks at um, uh, at Volley have been very cool. 
but we also uh, want to help police officers uh, you know, who want to do this kind of stuff. We want to help them too. So if they've got questions, they're welcome to get me. You can get me on any uh, platform at VoiceOver Cop. You can get me uh, through Traffic Services, and we're on, like we're Traffic Services on Twitter. We're Traffic Services on uh uh, Traffic Services Toronto on Instagram. Uh, you know what? The easiest is voice over cop anywhere you get me. We'll talk. <laughs> but if you if you want to know more about how we do this, feel free to DM me. I I I hope I give you gave you the impression that I'm approachable. Uh, come by, ask a question, and uh, uh, we'll see if we can get you pointed in the right direction. But the other thing is be part of our community and, and ask questions all the time at uh, TrafficCop.ca. Well, thank you again so much, Rashawn, uh, joining us today, and thanks to the entire audience for joining us so well as well. I'm. 100% sure you gave the uh, impression that you're approachable, and I'm sure lots of our audience will be heading over to VoiceOver Cop if they haven't already. Uh, but thank you again so much for joining us. Oh, anytime. You, you, you want to go for another hour? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, we're I, going I, into the after show. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Awesome. Bye, everyone.